next way to solve is using a quadratic formula. All right, there you go. I don't think you can hear the songs. Uh, all right, quadratic formula. Boom. You do not need to memorize it, for it will be on the formula sheet when you take the EOC. All you need to do is know how to use it. One way to use it is to make sure your quadratic formula is in standard form. That way you can pull out the A, the B, and the C. Hint, C typically means constant. A good way to remember that. At least in this class, it'll change later. So, with that in mind, A and B are coefficients. We are just plugging in numbers into the formula. So, again, get everything to one side. Plug in ABC, and we need to work it out for two answers. Okay. Boop. Uh, let's do another one. We'll come back to that one. So, example not to. One. Oh, well, that was terrifying. Alexa just went to town over there. Oh, that was scary. All right, again, it, we found out in class it does not matter if this is positive or negative, but I'm sticking with my good habits, so minus 51, minus 8 in. Ooh, what you do to one side, you do to the other. Boop, those cancel. That equals 0, 3 in squared, minus 8 in, minus 51. So, in this example, we have A, B, C. A equals tree. B equals negative 8. C equals negative 51. Again, the formula is negative B plus minus root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Another way to think of it, because uh, I was tutoring one day, you know who you are. They said I should do it this way. Minus. Man, even Siri's going crazy. I cannot talk to y'all without making Alexa and Siri go bonkers. Sheesh. Alright, so negative parentheses B parentheses plus minus square root B parentheses squared minus 4 parentheses A parentheses C all over to parentheses A. So, we put the parentheses to give the idea that we need to put the parentheses when we plug in these numbers so we don't mess up our negatives. So, whichever way you want to go, you pick. I'm just going to continue plugging stuff in. So, negative parentheses negative 8 plus minus root parentheses negative 8 again squared minus 4 parentheses 3 parentheses negative 51 all over 2 times parentheses 3 now at this point you could just plug all of this in the calculator and you'll get your answer provided you just put a plus here where the plus minus is and then go back and switch it to a minus. Right now, I'm just going to keep whittling it down as much as I can. Of course, this example gets in our way. Uh, maybe I can hide. Nope. Nope. Go away. Nope. Go away, please. Keep going away. All right. Maybe that's good enough. So, keep going. Two negatives make a positive. Boom. Eight plus minus. Negative 8 squared is 64, if you plug in your calculator correctly. 4 times 3 is 12, and now I need my calculator for this. 12 times 51. I know the two negatives make a positive, so I know it's positive 6, 12. All over 2 times 3, which is 6. So, 6, 12 plus... 64 is 676, so wait, plus minus, 676, all over, 6. 
<clears throat> Again, you got to keep whittling it down. Of course, I don't have my Casio with me. I would have plugged it in by now. But for kicks and grins, let's see if 676 is a perfect square. Naturally, my phone calculator is not flipping over like I wanted to. You know what I mean when I say flip it over? Scientific calculator move. There we go. Got it going. It is. 26 is its perfect square. So again, recapping what I just did. Plug this in my phone. I got 26. So, 8 plus minus 26 over 6. From here, I'm going to split it to 8 plus 26 over 6. And 8 minus 26 over 6. So, 8 plus 26 equals 34 over 6. 8 minus 26 is negative 18 over 6. This turns into negative 3. This one just simply reduces, I believe, to, that's what I thought, 17. So 17 over 3. So our two answers is going to be negative 3 and 17 over 3. I know that's a lot of work because you're doing it on paper, but again, here, you can plug this in your Casio or TEI, I prefer the Casio, to get the right answer quickly. But you have to be careful. You've got to use your parentheses. You've got to plug it in correctly or you'll get an incorrect answer. So be weary about that. Whew. That was a lot of work. Now, I'm going to skip this example three. I'm going to go do example, that first example, because it does something weird. You know, we're going to focus in on this, what's under the radical, called the discriminant. Okay, when it's positive, we'll get two answers. But let's see what happens when it's a negative. Again, go ahead and pause it, try this one out. All right, we're back. Add four to both sides. Boop. Zero, six R squared minus eight R plus four, because those canceled. A is 6, B is negative 8, and C is going to be a full. Okay. So again, plugging stuff in. I'm doing it based on memory. Using my formula. You should have your formula written down, and it should be right there next to you. Oh, the oh I'm listening to Frozen again. Hopefully you can't hear it. I don't want y'all to get too crazy on me. Boop. And six. Again, referencing the formula, I made all my substitutions, plugged everything in. Again, from here you can plug it into the Casio, and I'll go ahead and warn you, we should be getting an error sign. But let's see why. So, negative negative is positive, 8 plus minus, that's 64, minus 24 times 4, which is 96. 2 times 6 is 12. So if we whittle this out some more. 8 plus minus 64 minus 96 is negative 32. And this is where we have our red flag. We cannot have a negative in the radical. Oh, that's like a guy with a mustache. Hmm, weird. Let me reset. Let's go back to the idea. Uh, you cannot... Let's see, what was I doing here? I was trying to do a no smoking sign. Negative. Cannot. There we go. Cannot be a negative. You'll get imaginary numbers. Okay? Which means this answer is no real solutions. 
you'll talk about imaginary numbers come next class, you know, advanced algebra. All right, I didn't want to make this video too long. As always, you just need to practice, practice, practice. Plug stuff in the formula, whittle it down, or plug it all in the calculator, and you should get two answers. Now, again, if you want to make some notes here, if we have a positive in the discriminant, we should have two answers. Okay? If we get a negative, you'll have no real solutions. But if it gets a zero, that means the radical goes away. That refers to one answer. Very good key concept you should write down. All right, I would not be surprised if the EOC didn't ask you something like this about the discriminant being negative, zero, or positive. So you may want to jot these notes down in a neat manner. That's all we have tonight, folks. Have a wonderful evening. Boop.